right, Cannon's making his way up. So far, it's looking good. <laughs> Jeez. That was scary! <laughs> 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 Uh, who is it? Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ed over at Team Aquascape. I'm down in Jupiter, Florida at Camp Kennan. Check out this cool place. It's got a really cool existing pond here. Water level is really low right now and that's because it is the dry season. But Kennan, if you're not familiar with him, he has all types of really cool animals. He's got reptiles from all over the world. He's got tortoises, he's got water monitors, he's got pythons, you name it, he's got it. What we are doing here today is we are starting to prep work for a beautiful recreation pond that will be completed by the first week of February. But what we have to do here is clear out some of the trees, start laying everything out so we can start construction. Both of these trees are coming out and that's because we have a wetland filter going in right over here. This pond is gonna be utilized for Kenan as a uh, filming set for all of his unique wildlife to swim in a natural pond. So day one, figuring out everything that needs to happen here. Location of the wetland filter is gonna be positioned somewhere back over in here at a higher elevation. So water's gonna kind of flow itself into the pond from this direction. How you doing, Ed? <laughs> doing good, just kind of doing a quick walk over here. I'm just, just showing what we have. Jeez. <laughs> we got a couple of those big trees down and now we're going to get ready to uh, move the electric and then also start doing the elevations. What we have to do here is figure out the high water level. So I'm going to take a walk over by the existing pond. Here's Kenan. What's happening? <laughs> it's uh, very low. We're in the middle of our dry season. Winter uh -huh. is actually our dry season here in Florida. This is basically how deep you'd need to go in the ground to hit water. So what we'll do is we'll set up our transit and we will get some elevations to figure out where our water level's at inside the pond, as Kenan just talked about, in relationship to the patio and where the new pond is gonna be. So next steps, move some of this stuff out of the way. We got our laser transit going and we're gonna shoot some elevations. So we have our back edge marked over on this section. This will all get built up with soil all through here tapering down over that way. This opening here is gonna be where this waterfall is gonna be. So there's gonna be a waterfall kind of sitting at that elevation falling towards us. Down underneath this area where I'm standing, right over in here, that section is gonna be a 2,000 gallon reservoir. We're also gonna capture all the water off the back of the roof over here. Rainwater is gonna come into the pond that will overflow, drop down, and fill that reservoir. Then we'll be able to utilize that rainwater for the pond system, which is perfect. So again, replicating nature, utilizing the natural resources. Down here in uh, South Florida, they get an abundant amount of rain, so we're gonna capture that stuff. It's actually gonna be good for the ecosystem, which is gonna be ideal for all the animals that are gonna be going inside of this pond. So we're utilizing this existing wall that's on site and we're tapering all this soil up against that. This is gonna be a barrier for some of the existing turtles and tortoises that he has in this enclosure. And then on this side, he has a whole nother tortoise enclosure. Pond is starting to take shape. We're just chipping away at that entire edge to kind of level everything out. This is approximately two feet below water level. We have the existing patio right over in here where we remove those pavers. There's gonna be a deck that's set down. It's gonna create that dock-like feeling. You can sit on the edge of the dock, put your feet in the water. It's gonna drop down to a total depth of five feet right at the base of that. Have this little pocket over in here. We're gonna have a stepping stones or a bridge coming across on the other side. That will allow access off of the patio possibly doing another little structure, seating area, pergola, something over on this side, giving a whole different vantage point for the property. So it's a wrap for day one. We got the main excavation at least kind of marked out. We're down about 24 inches deep and that's below water level. And what we did with all that, so you can see we kind of have it piled up all the way around over in here. 
kind of have everything leveled out. That's gonna be our negative edge over in there. It's gonna be a nice big rocky peninsula over on this side. Over here, we've established where our deck is gonna go. We're also thinking some big boulders on either side. This one section right over in here, that little area probably will not get excavated out right away. And that's because we need to get our machine. Patiently waiting for the excavator to arrive. We did as much as we could with the Kubota and now it is time to uh, get the rest of the excavation done and we have been waiting. There it is. Nice. That's gonna make really quick work of the excavation. That'll also assist us with placing boulders, retaining walls, and you name it. Nice job, Chris. Buddy. So it's about putting out fires in this situation, <laughs> right, Ed? You got so it. We almost missed this delivery. <laughs> they ran and got it here today. I gotta get the Kubota and try and get this stuff off the track. Busy, busy. All right, product is here. And we got a big old liner right there, 50 by 100. That thing probably weighs 1,800 pounds or so. And we have aqua blocks. We got fabric. We got rock pad. All types of good stuff to get this recreation pond complete. Excavation is moving along, making great progress. We are at our final elevation on the bottom. That soil down there, or I should say sand, it's like pure sugar sand down there. That is five and a half feet below water level. We went a little bit deeper, and that's to accommodate some of the uh, material that we're gonna place on the bottom, which is gonna be coarse sand. And the reason we're doing that, it's not typical, but the reason we're doing it is because of the wildlife that Kenan's gonna be putting in here. This is gonna be the home for the fly river turtle, and they are gonna burrow. They're gonna be digging down on the bottom, which actually is gonna be beneficial because what happens in the bottom deep layers of sands and sediments and things like that is it could become anaerobic. So the turtle being down there, stirring that stuff up is gonna be good. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna put in a series of jets along the very bottom. That's gonna help with the overall circulation. What else you got going over here, Chris? Uh, we're cutting out our trench for our under drain. Right? We actually have water in there. Yeah, so that's what that under drain is gonna be for is to alleviate any potential hydrostatic pressure. And this is the dry season and you know, we've got groundwater. During the rainy season, this could be a huge, huge problem, right? So we're gonna put a four inch perforated drain tile in here to collect any water that starts to perk up. The idea is, is just to alleviate the bubbling of the liner. So we're getting really, really close here to, to getting a liner in, in this afternoon. And then the next steps will be to start doing some of the stonework around that perimeter, as well as getting our material on the very, very bottom. We have our drain rock uh, coming in, in wheelbarrows, bringing buckets down to the bottom, covering up that perforated drain pipe. So what that's gonna allow it to do is any of that water that's filling up inside of here is gonna take the path of least resistance, go down that pipe, work its way up and out from underneath the liner where it won't cause any problems for us. We're getting to a great point in the project. Chris and Nick are bringing in the fabric right now and then we're gonna get ready to cut our liner in place. So when we're designing and building things, we wanna make sure we have a good solid foundation. It starts with a good excavation. We cover it up with the geotextile material, increases the load bearing capacity, stabilizes everything, provides the right base for the rubber liner. Then we'll come over the top of this with another layer and that's gonna be what we call our rock pad. That's gonna protect the entire bottom from the coral rock that we're gonna be using. The other thing that can is gonna have in here is all types of exotic animals. Alligators, water monitors, anacondas, pythons, all types of crazy critters. And we wanna make sure that the bottom of the pond is protected. Every square inch will be covered with rock and gravel, but under that rock and gravel, we wanna make sure everything has been taken care of. So we got the liner roughly positioned, 62 and a half feet by 50 feet. Unfold the whole thing, position it, get all the folds out, and we're ready for rock down to the bottom. 
So uh, when you're building ponds, sometimes it's good to beg, borrow, and steal. And I'm lucky that I begged and got some of this material. This is a telephone pole my buddy Ed had. And I came in here and I cut it into six and a half foot lengths. And Ed, you want to use it as a retaining wall for some of the soil. Looks like you got plenty of material to work with here. Yeah, I think it's going to be perfect. So that'll be the back edge wall uh, behind our wetland filter. So that'll give us the right elevation that we're looking for to have an elevated filter that will fall into the rec pond. So it's cool. going to be sweet. Yeah. Not, not going to be sweet moving this stuff. Hey, this, <laughs> <Nope. wider. laughs> this, is the, this is the Ken and Harkin CrossFit. <laughs> I like it. You can see the remnants of our drain over there. So that is the under liner drain that goes underneath everything. We got the rubber liner in place. Uh, we have our geotextile under the liner. And then on top of it, we have another layer of the heavy duty geotextile. That's going to give us a lot more protection for all the animals that he's going to have in here, as well as the type of rock we're using. We're using a native uh, Florida stone. It's a cap rock, but it's kind of sharp. So we want to have this nice and cushioned so we could come in here and start dropping in some of those big boulders. One load of logs dropped off. Second load coming in, unload these, and we are gonna call it a day. We got the liner in, we got a lot of stuff taken care of today. Everybody's beat. <laughs> but it was a good day, for sure.